Hey, how's it going? I'm Anna Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so I'm guessing some of you probably noticed that there is a little bit less hair than there was in the last one. Um, I got bored. <laughs> so my explanation. I, I, I got bored and a little happy with the scissors again. Um, it, it's, it's looking alright, I think. <laughs> I know hairdressers are probably absolutely going to hate me, but... To be fair, it was also really, really hot, and I was like, oh, I need to do something, I need to do something to just, just do something, really. <laughs> so yeah, I've uh, lost a few inches from the hair again. Um, that's the, the second haircut that I've given myself since March. <laughs> Um, however, we are now sort of at the point where lockdown is going to start easing off. Um, so my next haircut, theoretically, whenever that will be, probably not for a while, um, will definitely be at an actual hairdresser's. <laughs> so that my, my poor hair can actually uh, be cut properly and not in a very haphazard sort of way. <laughs> Like I said that, still don't know when I'm going back to work. Um, <clears throat> hoping soon. Definitely hoping soon. Um, but as far as we know at this point in time, it's looking like it's going to the end of July. Fingers crossed that it will actually be the end of July because it's, it feels like every time we get information about it, it's being pushed back even further. Um, and again, who knows, it might be a case of they're waiting uh, until certain things can happen so that it's a little bit more worth us being open because we are the smallest store in the, in the franchise, <laughs> in our part of the franchise. Um, but, you know, I, I think it does just sort of generally come down to all the things that we've been told so far that we have a fairly awkward space for... Um, getting the safety measures in there uh, and obviously because it takes a while for them to put everything in you know it, it's yeah it's, it's a bunch of that sort of stuff at the moment so fingers crossed hopefully end of July won't get pushed back again um, but at this point in time we still really don't know anything uh, and it's just a whole lot of yeah we'll wait and see more than anything else <coughs> I apologise for the coughing again. <laughs> um, so, um, in some quick updatey sort of news from last time, um, I have now finished writing the third book in the spin-off series. Still, I'm still working on um, a third book in the Shadows Beneath the Light series that is definitely going quite well at the moment. Um, yes, it is taking me a lot longer to sort of get through and, and to write stuff, but I'm much happier with where with where I am with it at this moment in time. Um, and it's definitely the kind of pace that I will be going back to once work builder finally stuff up again. Um, on the flip side of that, because it is more than likely going to be another couple of weeks before I go back to work. <clears throat> and because right before I wrote the last chapter... <laughs> okay, so, so, so true story here. Um, I kind of, as, as I said before, the third part of this, the, the third book in this spin-off series sort of came about um, after I wrote the final chapter in Rowan, when I was, I, I literally, I'd, I'd gone to bed. I was like, okay, that's it, I can go back to, to editing and stuff now. I, I, you know, I wouldn't even know which one of the other characters that I would want to focus on, or what kind of story that I would be going with, or anything like that. And then I remembered that moment. <coughs> that moment I kind of seen, um as being sort of a thing 
um, before I even sort of considered writing any spin-off books, um, when I was sort of like thinking about the future of, of these characters. That's actually the moment that kind of uh, ends Eldo's story, not in the sense of you actually get the moment, it, it's you, you get the moment before that moment, um, so you don't actually get that, that moment, but it definitely happens because that's the moment that you're kind of ending on. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and it, it feels like it's it's a it's a really you know a, a really good story. And it, you know uh, when I was sort of like coming towards the end, I was kind of like, well, there are two ways I can kind of do this. I can either have the moment earlier in the chapter and actually explore the moment properly, or I can lead up to that moment and then end with that moment. So it's sort of a nice open-ended conclusion because there are certain plot, plot threads that don't necessarily get tied up very neatly um, but they're not major plot threads they're kind of more little nuances um, little things going on in the background to sort of remind you that this is this is a world that that they are living in um, I think I sort of loosely tie up all of the important plot threads <laughs> I don't I don't think I leave any sort of um, that really should have been that really should have been addressed. Um, kind of plot threads. Uh, but I do actually now set up for the fourth book. <laughs> I know I'm a terrible person. I need to stop doing this. Um, but in the same way, so so with with Rowan, I it was literally the night after I wrote the the final chapter that I was like, oh. Oh, oh, there is another story. <laughs> and then, yeah, my brain was then sort of like trying to work out how to um, how to, to actually do the story and how to sort of uh, work the story and, and what the story actually was, um, just because I, I knew uh, that moment was a thing that should happen. And I, you know, I, I set up this, this changing in the world and I also didn't want to ruin the continuity from the epilogue of Hyena Boy because it's all set in the same continuity. Um, so I was like, okay, you know, can I do this? Um, and that, that night after I wrote that last chapter of Rowan, I plussed out enough um, for me to be happy with, with going forward with that. And the night before I wrote the final chapter of LJ, <laughs> the night before, um, again, I was, I, I was literally kind of you know, going through my head, are there any, any characters that I can do anything more with? And, and part of that did come from the, from the fact that there is this, this sort of thread that is set up throughout, throughout these books, um, which is very sort of background. But it comes up quite a bit in LJ's story and it's one of the few things that I think in the series as a whole doesn't really get fully explored or wrapped up. It doesn't need to necessarily. Um, there's nothing wrong with it very much being a sort of background element, but it was in thinking about that and um, again remembering some other little thing that I'd kind of envisaged and this sort of flash forward before I started writing any of these books that I kind of went oh okay there is a fourth story <laughs> um and then I got a very definite kind of whose story it was opening moments um, although actually when I came to writing it I have stepped it back a little bit um, so as to establish who these characters are and a sense of normality and in you know get the reader on board with certain ideas and stuff from the other books in the series just in case they haven't read any of the other books in the series <laughs> even though this is definitely a series and not a collection like the the adult one <laughs> not the adult one the narrator ones are so, you know, there is a definite order to these ones, um, there's a definite timeline to these ones. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a case of, um, that was a case of me very much going, I, oh, oh dear, there, there is another story. <laughs> and then getting that a very sort of definite, a very sort of definite moment 
and I, it, it took me a few goes through my head of working out exactly what that moment leads to um, and exactly where this story is, is gonna head from that point um, but yeah yeah I am I have the time to write it <laughs> that's my excuse if I have the time to like cut all my hair off and I've got the time to write this which I know is <sighs> what else am I gonna be doing what else am I gonna be doing I mean I still need to chase up my cover guy for getting those covers done <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not a chase the up kind of person, especially when it's somebody doing a favour for you. It's, it's, you know, it, you know, he doesn't have to do it on demand, but I kind of wish he would. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it's one of those cases of, I don't really have much else to be doing right now, and yes, I could go back to, um, to reading and reviewing stuff and which you know I, I do keep saying I do want to go back to and I do want to eventually go back to doing that stuff it's just I don't know there's something so much more productive about putting my time into the writing right now um so whilst I've got the time and I've got the energy even though Sometimes I'll, I'm, I'm there and I'm like, I, I could really do a day's break from this because it's like, blah. Um, and then I sort of work through that and then I'll do like the, the edit through at the end of the day um, as well uh, to sort of like add bits and, and, and improve bits. And yeah, it, it, I am enjoying it at the moment, um, even when I'm sort of having those moments of, oh God, I wish I could just, you know, take a proper break from this. <laughs> I don't know what I would do <laughs> because I would still be thinking about it um I'd still be thinking about it I'd still be concentrating on it a lot um so yeah I, I I'm in that sort of mode at the moment where it's a case of I probably don't have a lot of time left before I am going back to work but I only need like 19 days because these books are all 19 chapters <laughs> And then I'm doing that, I'm, I'm doing that. So it makes it so easy for me to work out what needs to be when and where and how to how to pace it and when I can sort of push things over, you know, that, that sort of moment, those moments that I need in order to sort of progress the story forward. It's so much easier to do it when you're like, okay, this is going to be 19 chapters long, so you know where the beats need to be you know roughly where the halfway point of the story is, you know um, where, you know, how roughly how many chapters you are probably going to need to to conclude everything and to wrap everything up uh, really nicely um, or as nicely as I ever do because I always leave things a little bit open-ended because that's the kind of writer I prefer to be. When you sort of like going in your head, okay, these are good, it's going to be 19 chapters, 19 chapters, that's, that's as long as it's going to be. And the chapters are all going to be roughly 9 to 12 pages long because 12 seems to be roughly the longest um, chapters in, in any of the books um, I've written so far. When, when you've, you've kind of got that in your head, it's, it's so easy to sort of plot it out correctly and know where you're going with that. And I think one thing I found when writing the, the other books from the racing collection is that I kind of got very lost in the idea of um, just just telling the story, just keeping the story going and seeing, you know, taking the time with it, exploring the characters, exploring all these new ideas that were kind of coming in and, and changing and modifying the story in whatever ways that it was doing that. Um, and, and I ended up with these really, really long books. <laughs> Which are great, don't, don't get me wrong, um, there's nothing wrong with them being really long books, but they, they are doorstops. Um, but they are good, you know, character books, they, they are good books for exploring, you know, in depth in exploring these characters. Whereas 
you know, the, these, um, these side books, they are definitely character explorations, but the character explorations over a shorter period of time, which helps because that's that's the one thing uh, with the colours I see. You're talking about a uh, it's not it's not quite 17 years, uh, it's about 15 years, roughly depending on how old you think those early not memories are um, at the beginning. With the colours I see. Um, no Duels Allowed takes place over, I think it's three, three and a half years. Um, we Giants takes place over at least two and a half years. Um, about two and a half years. <laughs> or is it about a year? It, it, it's about two-ish years, I think. Um, but, you know, that, that's a long period of time. That's a lot of stuff. That is going to happen if you if you're not going to rush it and if you're not going to rush through through everything. Um, whereas Toby takes place over about two three months at the most. Um, I I think you can argue that the scene at the end is probably about three months after the scene at the beginning, roughly speaking. Um, maybe not even quite that. June, July, August. So yeah, it's, it's sort of a three months, month ish period, uh, depending on whether you think that end scene is the end of August or the beginning of September, um, or, or you really get told it's it's that it's the end of the summer. And uh, I believe the story starts beginning of June, um, ish, <laughs> around that sort of time period. So you, you know, you're talking a two to three month. Um, you know, the, the time frame in the story is two to three months and the majority of that story happens in the first six to eight weeks of that um so you know it's it's a very condensed time frame um so having a shorter shorter number of chapters makes sense because you're not telling this big grand narrative you're just telling this event for, for this character that has taken him from you know where he is to begin with to where he is when he finishes uh, and it's a nice it's a nice you know story line. It's, it's you know he he goes through this you know, nice character exploration through these events um, and through all these things that, that happens to him and all these things that he learns and, and and stuff like that so yeah that's that's what we you know but that's why it works as being a shorter 19 chapter story opposed to you know the 48 chapter <laughs> 48 odd chapter epic that is I think the no doors allowed. Um I mean likewise Rowan uh starts in May maybe <laughs> um or is it, uh, it, it might be the the room. No, no, I th yeah, I, th I think Rowan starts the end of May, beginning of June. Um, definitely that sort of time frame again. It's it's roughly a year later, uh, roughly a year after um, the events in Toby. Uh, at any rate, so it, it's sort of like May, June-ish uh, when it starts. It does end in October, but there is a little bit of a time skip during the count, during one of the chapters, you get a condensed version of what happens um, during a six-ish week period, um, maybe closer to two months period. Uh, again, depending on where you define uh, or where you work out where what what time scale is, I think it's probably closer to two month period. Um, I don't remember if I specify exactly. In the story itself but again you know that that's still a shorter frame of time especially when a chunk of that time because I don't want to focus on it because a lot of it would just be mundanity of repeating stuff um, so it, you don't need all the details of that period of time to know what that situation is you just need a few details said to you here and there and you need to sort of see the progression of the character through the little snippet that you get um before the eventual 
end of that situation, which also happens within that chapter as well. Um, so you, you do sort of, as I said, you get a time skip happening during one of the chapters. Um, so that's where you get that sort of slightly longer stretch of time, but you're, you, you know, where you're focusing on where the story is, you, you don't need that stretch of time, um, as it were. Um, and then with LJ's story, LJ's story set about three and a bit years later, well, less than three years after where Rowan ends, because Rowan ends in the October and LJ's story starts at the beginning of September, <laughs> September 2007. Um, so yeah, the, the beginning of September 2007 is when you get this start of LJ's story and LJ's story ends New Year's Eve 2007, but that's after skipping out six-ish weeks um, from the story in the, you know, basically the, the final scene of the story skips on about six weeks. Six, five, five six-ish weeks, um, again, depending on where you think they are in November at the end of the previous, <laughs> at the end of the, the previous scene. Um, but again, you know, it, it's, it's a very condensed period of time of, of three to four, three to four months. Um, so it works in that kind of shorter format, it works to, to kind of be able to go, okay, that I want this story to be about 19 chapters long. These are all the beats that I need. This is when I can skip time forward a little bit in order to sort of show the progression of time um, and stuff like that. I don't need pages and pages and pages and chapters and chapters and chapters to tell the story because it's happening over a condensed period of time. And that's really what sets the spin-off books apart from the, um, the main series never rating collection books. Is a main series never rating collection books spans large periods of time. Um, and I, yeah, I, I say, you know, once, once you kind of go over a year, you're talking a large period of time in the lives of your characters. So you need that time to make sure that it's paced correctly, you make sure that, you know, the things don't feel rushed for, for readers so that you can see how and why the characters are developing in the way that they are developing. When you're dealing with a much shorter span of time, you, you need things to be more instantaneous, you need things, and, and, and I think that's kind of true to life as well. I think um, how we are changed by something that happens to us in the months and years um, after that event um, is different, how we are affected and changed by things that happen to us in the immediate aftermath of those things happening and the spin-off books are dealing very much with the immediate aftermath whereas the the never rated main books are dealing with all of the of the fallout and all of the changes and all of the things that you know happen to these characters after these events have impacted on them so yeah that's that's why I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm like, yeah, these books can be 19 chapters long and I can plot out how I need it to go. And it, it also gives me the nice opportunity um, to to allow uh, to allow my good friend Jade to have a little bit of a creative voice on, on, on this as well. I mean, I think I've mentioned to you guys before, um, a couple of the characters who were initially my characters she is very fond of um, and because she um, because she understands characters like this a little bit more than I do um, I do allow her to give voice to these characters um, so when I'm sort of writing the scenes of these characters in I quite often will sort of role play it with her a little bit just to sort of give me a better idea of, of what I'm doing and where it's going I don't take everything that she gives me. Um, sometimes I will literally say to her, no, are you doing that? <laughs> that doesn't work. That messes up the flow. Sometimes I'll like, I'll ignore a line completely if I don't think it will work. Sometimes I will put the line in slightly later. Um, if, you know, if it, if it just flows in a little bit better because she's very impatient and will sometimes give me additional lines before I have a chance to keep her up for anything. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, and 
sometimes I'll sort of uh, as I said, sometimes I'll sort of completely veto something that she's trying to do because I think it's out of character either for that character or not needed for that situation or is a misinterpretation of what's going on and it's not going to work with my overall idea for how the the scene is supposed to be. Um, but yeah, there are, there are a couple of characters which she very much gets to voice. Um, not all of them. <laughs> um, in fact, there there are a couple of characters where I've kind of gone, okay, she probably has a better understanding of what characters like this are like, um, because she has a lot more experience with dealing with people who are, you know, on the spectrum or have learning difficulties and various things like that. But there, there is one of, of those, well, there are a couple of those particular characters where I know exactly what their voice is in my head, um, and I know very much how, to me, they sound and then and they speak, um, and I'm sort of basing it very much on how I feel their personalities are, and you know, very that's very much kind of how it sort of started off with the one that she initially adopted, where I kind of realised after I'd started writing lines for the character that there was more going on to the character than I necessarily initially realised, um, at which point I started taking advice from her, initially just to sort of change the lines that I'd written to make it sound more in keeping um, with how the character should be portrayed, um, or how the character should feel, um, just based on you know, all the workshopping we have done for this particular character. Um, and then later on became me basically going, okay, th this is the scenario, this is the situation, this is all the information this character is going to have. Um, and sometimes I don't give her very much information. If I need that sort of very sort of genuine kind of reaction from the character, then I don't give her very much information. <laughs> um, Whereas alternatively, if I need a very specific kind of reaction, then I will literally say to her, look, this is what this scene needs to be about. We need to get to that point. Um, and I, you know, I want this character to sort of say this particular thing. We need to get to that point. Um, so, yeah, it, it works. <sighs> she says. <laughs> and there are now two characters that she, she does that for. Um, but you know, mostly, mostly it's all me. <laughs> and as I said, I will veto lines. I will uh, sometimes I am modifying lines slightly just to make them a little bit less clunky because you know she doesn't always necessarily. I mean, I I, I get the way the character talks or when, the way the characters are supposed to be talking, um, but sometimes the lines don't sound like they're reacting to the right thing um, or they're much too out of context um, and whereas with you know most of my other characters I would probably completely rewrite the lines or add in extra dialogue to sort of lead into that sometimes it doesn't necessarily work so I will just modify the lines in order to sort of fit the flow a little bit better um, and things like that so it, it's more a creative consultant. <laughs> She's my creative consultant on these couple of characters. Um, and then I'll make the mistake of saying something to her. Oh, oh, this was one of the things when I was writing Aldo's story. I made the mistake of saying something to her about one of the characters parents who hadn't been properly introduced at that point. <laughs> they sort of been mentioned but they hadn't properly been introduced at that point. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I have like a 20 page essay on who these characters are. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know who these characters are yet. How did you get all that information from like a paragraph? <laughs> But <laughs> didn't you describe the characters? <laughs> um, 
but you know I took her ideas on board I didn't utilize all of them or I didn't you know put all of them in um exactly as she would have um based on the information that she gave me um definitely sort of left off certain details that she uh, of how she would envisage it because I couldn't see a neat way of working it in but I did sort of go with as many of those ideas as possible because you, you know what uh, sometimes if you've written apparently a paragraph that tells you a lot about the characters even though those characters have no dialogue whatsoever in that paragraph <laughs> I don't know but yeah you know she she's my go-to workshop person um so you know sometimes I will let her run away with things a little bit um and you know because it helps it helps you know to, to have that sort of sounding board there even if sometimes it feels like that sounding board is taking over just a little bit <laughs> but at the same time in this particular case, it did allow me to flesh out these characters in a way that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of otherwise, because at that point in time, I hadn't really given them enough thought, even though they were the parents of the love interests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't know how I, uh, how I managed to neglect that one. Um, okay, anyway, so I have... Babbles on for far too long at this point. Um, okay, I hope you've enjoyed this another rant about the spin off books. Oh, how little life I've got at the moment. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're looking forward to the next one, which will probably be a roundup of June, which will again just be talking about the writing again because I've not I've not done anything else. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.